Hello, I'm Ted Ross. Welcome to my workshop. In one of our last uh, Woodturners Guild of North Carolina meetings, um, a question came up about how the Vera Grind uh, jig works. And the question was about the arm. So everybody's seen these jigs, probably almost everybody has these jigs. The question though is that if I set the arm here or here, how does it change? Does it change my bevel? Does it change the wing of my tool? What does it change exactly? I did some, some research and stuff on it and I thought what we do today is go through and do some experiments with this and see what happens when we do change this so we can kind of answer that question um, as we go along. So why might this be important? If you, uh, if you have all your tools uh, sharpened exactly the way that you want them, you don't have any problems with it, you've got your jig set, but you're not, to me, you're not getting the advantage of this arm then. Why have this arm flexible to move up and down? So what we want to do is try to discover that because we may be able to improve the tools that we have and or we can sharpen them quicker or we can uh, regrind uh, tools and try different things and we can get back and resharpen things at a quicker pace essentially because we know what the setup is and why it's set up that way. So hopefully when we get done with this, that will answer a lot of our questions. Now I'm not the ex expert on this on uh, the jig or the, sh or the sharpening stuff. And you might also ask the question as well, I've seen this on One Way's site, you know, or I've got the, I've got the DVD on it. So what's gonna be different about today? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna experiment with changing this wing back and forth. We're not just gonna set it one place and grind. That's gonna be the difference. We're gonna see what happens when we do two, a couple different grinds on there and a couple different positions over with the same tool and so forth on that. So that's really, I'm just here to, to do that, to share what I've learned. I've been sharpening my own tools for a while. Uh, I think they work pretty well for me. And uh, hopefully when we get done, you'll have picked up something from this and uh, you'll be able to do a little bit better job on your sharpening as well. Okay, so let's, uh, let's walk through and introduce the tools that we have available to us, at least today, that I have available that support the, the Veragrind tool. So we have that, of course. Then there's the Raptor tools. These help you set the distance from the V-arm, which is, this is your V-arm here. So from your V-arm to the grinding wheels, markers. And then these are degree setting gauges. And uh, we'll, we'll use one of these on the grinder today as well. So the gouges we have, I have out here today, um, is um, I got a few bowl gouges here, some in the handles and some out of the handles. Um, I just wanted to show you a couple of them. This is my go-to gouge. This is a crown tool, and it's a 3 8 bowl gouge. And uh, you can see I've got uh, about a 55 degree angle on it. I've got a little bit of sweep on the wing, and I've also uh, got a triple bevel essentially on it. So this is 55 on the very end, but then this is just knocked back. So when I go around corners in the bowl, it doesn't uh, bruise the wood. The other one I have is a one-way 5 8 inch gouge and uh, you can see the the swept on that is a little bit complex. This is closer to an Ellsworth and may not be quite as long as his but it's pretty close uh, to that um, and it's a heavy it's 5 8 and I really like this gouge for green wood and uh, does all my heavy work. This is a one-way also and uh, this is I got uh, maybe when I first started turning so that's maybe one of my first grinds. Not very good. Um, I never use this, and, and uh, so we may regrind that that gouge today. And then this gouge here is one that I inherited lately, and uh, I've colored the edge of this so up. But you can, pop, I hope you can see that this wing comes back here. It's got a big bubble in it right there on the top. And if you can see the other wing, it's a lot shorter, the the wing length. And it's got a big bubble that goes up here so it's very uneven and this is the one that we're going to tackle i'm going to take this one first before we we, we start we need to understand that there's three elements for uh, in considerations for sharpening a bowl gouge so what the nose bevel is and then the flute sweep on the wing so how long of a swing or how short whether it's flat or convex here and then the flu wing uh, uh shape and so to do that there's three jig settings we have to do. There's the protrusion, the arm position, and the distance to the wheel. So all three of these things we have to do in order to, to obtain the three elements that we want in our gouge in the end. Okay, so how do you set that up? Uh, you loosen up your platform a little bit so that you can move it around a little bit. 
Uh, get your 40 degree mark on here. You can set it on the wheel or set it on the platform first. But you want this on the wheel so it's touching on these two points here. Not here and here, but these two points here on your wheel. So hold it in there like that. You can hold it with your thumb and put your fingers on the other side of the, the wheel like that and then adjust your platform accordingly till you reach your 40 degrees. So we're going to use this one here today to do that with. This is 80 grit and this one here is 180 grit. So this is my finer grinding wheel and this is a little heavier so we're going to use a heavier one. All right so let's go ahead. I've got a straight line on here that I can use to guide me and I'm just going to bring this in here and grind it back. So I've ground it back here now. I got a 40 degree. Uh, I've maybe gone just a touch more than I need to, but that's okay uh, on that. And uh, we now have our bevel set on there. We'll use that to essentially set our distance to the wheel. We'll set our distance in the Vera grind. So remember, in order to do this, the three position settings are we need to do our protrusion from the end of the the gouge to the face of the jig. We need to set our arm and we need to set our distance uh, for the V arm. And what we're going to do as an experiment is we're going to move this up to the second notch, which is probably for a 40 40 where we need to be. What we're going to do is grind a little bit on each side. And we're going to see what that grinding at a position number two provides us. So here you can see, remember that this wing was a lot steeper to begin with. You can see it's hitting down here at the bottom, grinding that off. On this side, because it was steeper, cut back enough already, you can see that it's grinding way down here now on it already. Let's go ahead and change this now to number five and see what, we ha what happens there. Since we changed this, what's going to happen? Well, we changed this, we also changed, which people think, I change just to change my bevel. No, it changes the sweep, not the bevel. Now the bevel to this is changed, but I don't want that. I want to keep the bevel I have. I just want to change the wing. I bring this in, and I'm just going to do this while it's still running. That's pretty close. And now I've matched my bevel, and now I'm going to grind on the side here. Look at the difference now to what we had before, even on this side over here. This is now ground off and you can see it's, it's attacking it to come way back here. If I follow that line, it's going to come out way out here versus the other line was coming out over towards more this direction here. If I look at the other side, it's the same thing. You can see that this sweep is coming back here and it'll come and curve out here and end up out here someplace. So let's move it back number two and uh, I will grind this down that's not too bad right there so I got fairly straight there my wing is cut back straight wings 40 degrees here it's 40 degrees back from here like that and I can check that with the gauge as well to see so let's take another tool and we'll do a grind on a swept wing next so you can see what that looks like as well okay so this one uh, if we want to change this in it's, it's kind of a swept now but it's it's flat across here and I don't like that I like it more rounded so in order to do that um, since this is cut back here I can't just grind this back here because I'm already back far enough so I got to grind off some of the tip so I'm going to do that is I'm going to hold the flutes right against the grinding wheel like that and I'm going to take some of the tip off and then we'll come back and regrind the sides of it. So this, uh, I got a pretty good round to it. It could be possibly a little bit rounder, but it's not bad. I'll set it up in my jig and then we'll come back and, and grind the wings. I, I decided to grind this back because I had so much to grind off the tip anyways in order to get it sharp. Again, so I ground it off at 55 degrees and um, I'm going to mark it right now with a marker and put it in here to set my, my distance from the wheel 
to the bottom of the, of the V-tool. So now I'm going to turn on the grinder. I'm going to grind these wings back so I can get them sharp back on both sides and I'll have the curvature that I want on the wing and they'll be sharp. Okay, so I've ground back this. This is a maybe a little bit more length of sweep for this size of tool. I could have maybe been at a number four instead of a number five. This is not too bad, but it's just a little bit flatter than I like it. And also, if you can see it, it's a little pointier than I want, which is good. Because now what I can do is grind the point off a little bit and I'll get a little bit more arc here on my tool also will shorten up my length of my sweep just a little bit. So I'll do that and come back and show you. Okay, so um, I've rounded off. You can see it's more rounded here now than pointed. And also I've got a pretty good, what I like anyways, for a uh, convex shape on there. It's just a little bit rounded on that. So I can use that for, for uh, shearing cuts as well. And it's nice uh, rounded off uh, around it. All I would need to do now is just clean it up on the finer wheel and hone it. And it'd be ready to go. I just wanted to show you a double bevel. So I just sharpened this up on here. It's a, it's a more of a long grind on it. And uh, it's like a 55 degree angle. It, this is fairly longer than what I really want it to be. I want to knock off this heel on here. So the question is, you know, how do you do that? How do you do it quickly? So once I finish getting my main bevel done here and my wings the way that I want them, then there's a couple ways you can do it. You can put this back in the holder, you can loosen up the V-arm, and you can shove the V-arm in so it pushes the heel into the wheel and then grind it off. The easy way to do it is put it back in there. Just loosen this up, you know, when I was at two inches when I was sharpening, and just bring it out until you get until it looks like the angle that you want it, and then tighten it back up again. Start your grinder up. There you can see maybe I've taken off some of that. So I've got a second bevel now. And I can take it off just a touch more. Not too much because I don't like this to be too short. That's good. And then if I say, well, I want this one I don't really need to, but if I want to take off some more, all I would do is just loosen this up again Shove it back out a little bit more, another inch or two. I can get the last part here and I don't have to worry about uh, the bottom of my bull gouge hitting the bottom of the bull when I'm going around the curve and bruising the wood. That relieves it from that. And then if I get all done and oh, maybe I went a little bit too far on that, all I got to do is go back over here again. My arm is set good. I don't have to do anything that is it's correct for my bevel on the very end. I can set that back on there again and I can go back in here and I can touch it up. And it comes out, as you can see, perfectly where it was before. Okay, so just to finish up on this and kind of summarize. So this is the first one that I ground here with more of the 4040 grind on it. Um, and this was in position number two on the Vera grind. So I got 40 degree bevel here and 40 degree uh, sweep. And this is the longer sweep or the Irish grind or Ellsworth grind. This is about a 50, 50 degree, 55 angle and it has more of a swept wing as you can see uh, across the top of it there. So you can see that this comes back quite a bit further. This is a smaller gouge. It's a 3 8 and that's half inch. Then this one goes because it's at a steeper angle on it. And so it doesn't cut back here quite as far as what this will. And that's what the arm is doing for us. The other thing that the arm does, from the top of the flute to the bottom here, it's much steeper on the longer grind or on the, on the higher position, you might say, number five, than it is when you look at it here with the, with the number two. This is more of a wedge shape coming down, so it's wider at the base than this one. So this one takes a lot more off through here but it also gives you a, a narrow to fit in and uh, you can lay this tool down a little bit more uh, in the bowls and so forth. And this one provides wider. It also 
This edge will actually last a little bit longer on here because it's a more blunt edge. This is a much steeper edge, so it's much sharper, but it also will dull uh, that much faster in there. So it's a really, you know, a choice, you know. And then, of course, the, the swept on it, as I go back over here again, whether you want more of a, a uh, convex shape or, or more of a flat shape like this one has, that's a, a preference on that. Okay, so uh, this kind of rounds it out uh, for us, so to speak. Um, finishes up. So we talked about the, the Verigrind 2 and the settings from so, so setting 2, which is this one, and uh, the shorter sweep and the wider stance of it, lower profile, so it's kind of shaped out this way further as well. We have the number 2, and then this one here, which is a number 5 on here, we can see we get a longer sweep on it, and also it's steeper going down the side, so you have less um, tool in the way when you're turning as well for that. So, so hopefully this helped you out. Hopefully uh, you got something out of this and learned something more about the Vera grind and you can apply it to your tools and try it on some of those if you've got some grinds that you're uh, not happy with right now and want to change them, whatever. Happy turning!